Well, hello there. God bless you today. Bishop Patrick L. Wood Sr. here. I am excited about the things that the God of the Bible is doing, and I'm excited, my friends, for you. There's a message from the Lord for you today that I want to share that's going to bless you, and I want you to, I want you to embrace it. I don't want you to question it, and the reason I don't want you to question it is because the message is not my opinion. You know, I don't waste your time with things like that, but the, the message is from the Lord. It's undeniable and it's for you. Now, listen, there's a whole lot of depression going around today. I think that people are, well, they're admitting it. The effects of the lockdown, the shutdown, the separation of people has taken its toll on people. Locally here in Raleigh, I saw on one newscast as they interviewed a pastor, they began to say that church members got depressed because they couldn't attend their churches. Well, duh, yours truly was saying that all the time. And we were saying to pastors, uh, open your churches because people need to be able to enter the house of God. Thank God for the miracle of, uh, of social media. Thank God for these platforms. But these platforms aren't designed to take the place of the actual church service. I'm a bike rider and I enjoy riding my, my bike. Uh, but I also have purchased uh, uh, an apparatus that's called a trainer. And you could you connect the bike to the trainer and you can ride. And when you're on the trainer, you're not actually going anywhere, but it, it simulates riding a bicycle. Well, the trainer is awesome. But my friends, it doesn't take the place of being out there on a trail with friends riding and taking in the fresh air and all of God's glory and all of God's goodness and dealing with all of the challenges of an actual trail. Well, Thank God for social media. Thank God for YouTube Live, Facebook Live, all of these platforms that we participate in, but nothing takes the place of actually walking into the house of God. <laughs> David comes to my mind when he said one day, while just uh, caught up in the affairs of being a king and running uh, Israel and doing all the things that a great leader has to do, he said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. He says, and that is to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. That's Psalms 27. He said, I would just love to go into the tabernacle and just look at the beauty of the house of God, the tabernacle, and to inquire, to ask questions, to seek God, to inquire in his temple temple. That's nothing like the house of God. And my friends, uh, people are, are, are depressed. People are going through, but I want to come today and speak to you and, and give you some things that's going to bless you real good. And as you know, uh, this week is yet week 52 for us here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. It is our 52nd week back in live services here at the church. And God is so good. The Lord has blessed us and he's yet blessing us. And we thank the Lord and we look forward to week 53, week 54, so forth and so on by his grace and by his favor. And my friends, the favor and the grace of God is with you. But I want to speak to you. I want to talk to you just for a moment because there are reports. Uh, uh, depression is up. Suicide is up. People are troubled. The, the lockdowns have had a devastating effect on the psyche of many. But I want you to know, my friends, that you don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be afraid. I know that there are things going on today. Look at what has happened with the gas lines and, and the, the, these are cyber people who are hacking into these things and all, none of us know where stuff like that will lead. So we're praying for our power grid, for instance, and we're praying for other areas of society because if you can uh, key in or lock in or whatever the proper language is and shut down uh, 
uh, oil pipeline, then uh, uh, what about uh, the power grid and so forth and so on? And uh, we have the problem that the border, uh, uh, all time high, people coming into the country as never before. They're not being tested for COVID. We don't know what's going on. These things can't be good. But you know what? You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid because the God of the Bible has given the believers uh, a solution. Now, let me say something to you. At least in the Bible, 365 times, 365 times we are told in the scripture, be not afraid. 365 times. Now, any, any, any way you look at that, if you break it down, God is saying every day, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Be not afraid. We're told in the scriptures at least 25 times to be strong. <laughs> be strong. Be strong. Be strong. We're told in the scriptures in various ways at least 26 times to be courageous. Or to take courage. Now, when you look at these entries in the word of God, I think it doesn't take much for us to realize that what God is saying to every man out there and what God is saying to every woman out there is man up, woman up. Don't be afraid. Don't let the pressures of life break your spirit because the Lord is with us. Now, listen, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter number two, Paul says in verse one, now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind. The word here, shaken, comes from a Greek word that says, that literally means to be disturbed. Don't don't you be disturbed in your mind. I know we, we're seeing things. We see the unrest. We see the challenges that are going on. And listen, don't let the media manipulate you. The media has so manipulated people who look like me that we're under the impression that every day the police are is going out there and indiscriminately killing black people. It's amazing how a, a, a school teacher was pulled the other day and she literally called the officer whom she did not know. She called him a murderer. Well, my friends, the New York uh, Post who keeps up with these, uh, the, 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 these occurrences thus far in our country, thus far in America, the number of white men who have been shot and killed by the police, uh, the numbers are 114. Conversely, the number of black men who have been shot and killed by the police uh, is 60 or 61, maybe 62. Now, 60 uh, and, uh, and 114, these are numbers that, uh, that we hate. We don't know what happens. We don't know whether or not they were legal shootings or whatever the case may be. But my point that I'm making, the simple point is we're being led to believe that we're just being slaughtered in the streets and the media knows how not to show the killings of uh, uh, the shootings of whites. They, and they, they show the, the, the shootings of, of black just to give the impression that they're trying to kill us. Well, all these things have a negative effect on our psyche. Now, I'm not judging any particular case. I'm not saying whether or not this guy should have been shot or shouldn't have. But I'm just showing that the raw numbers, if we're going to talk numbers, the numbers show that uh, more whites are being shot and killed by the police than blacks. But you wouldn't know it if you had to go by uh, your local news. So they're they putting things out there that's designed to keep you angry, to keep you in the streets, to keep your blood pressure up. Uh, these things will kill you dead. I was listening the other day and they were talking about all the people who died in the rest homes and different things from COVID. And yet I heard from someone who worked in the industry and they said to me, Bishop, it wasn't COVID that was just killing the people. It was what we did to them, what they told us to do. We locked them away. The parents, the, the, the family couldn't visit. And not only could their families visit them, but they couldn't visit each other. So everybody's locked in a room. 
They're locked in a room, senior citizens. Everyone's locked in a room, locked away, no fellowship, no communications. And that is what hastened the death of many. And uh, we all know about what uh, Cuomo did in New York. Well, look at, look at the game that's being played. I want to say to you, keep your mind together. Paul says, don't be disturbed. Don't be shaken. He says, be not shaken uh, or be troubled. Be not shaken in mind, nor troubled, neither by spirit, that is revelation, nor by, by word, that is false teachings, nor by letters as from us. Someone had forged a letter and, and put Paul's name on it. <laughs> and represented the letter as being from Paul. And they wrote and told the people at, at, at Thessalonica that the rapture had taken place already. And those people thought that they had been left behind. Now, can you imagine how shaken they were thinking that they had been left behind all of this because of a, of a, a, a spiritual attack, improper teachings and propaganda forgeries, the, the, the media of the day, the communicators of the day, communicating the wrong things, the wrong message, the devil attacking people. Oh, Satan is coming against us. But I want to say to you today, be strong, be strong, serve the Lord with gladness. Know that the God of the Bible is with you and don't let these things that are going on in the world overwhelm you and rob you of your joy. Praise God. Listen, the Lord is still in his holy temple. The Lord is on the throne and God's got us. Amen, my friends. Now, tonight I want to bring, call your attention to Kojic.org. Kojic.org. Org. That's our Church of God in Christ uh, website. This week, we are in our ministry to men, the uh, workers conference, men, perfecting men. We're under the, the, the dynamic leadership of our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard. I'm so excited about the, this man of God. And he has partnered yours truly with Bishop designee Michael B. Golden Jr. And Bishop uh, designee Golden has done, he's been the, the, the director of the men's department for the past three years. He's done a tremendous job with it. And the presiding bishop asked if I would join and uh, work with uh, Director Golden as a director. And we are having a ball. I am excited uh, about this man of God. Last night on our opening night, we, the, if you saw it, you saw that the service was prayer. That was the service. Prayer. We didn't raise an offering. We just prayed. We prayed. We had testimony. Praying for God's presence. Praying that God would move. Praying that God would take us back to holiness. Praying that God would touch our elected officials. Praying that God would touch America. Praying that God would heal that God would pour out of his spirit upon all flesh, praying that the will of God be done in the earth. And it was a powerful, powerful, powerful service on last evening. Well, tonight we have one of the greatest preachers in our church, Bishop Edwin Walker. Now, you don't want to miss this guy. This guy is the real deal, real deal, and he's a genuine article. He is a preacher indeed, and you're going to be blessed by his ministry. Join us and enjoy the festivities of the Men Perfecting Men Conference and we'll join you next this coming Sunday and by next Thursday we'll be back in the sanctuary again. Hey, let me tell you, we're, we're excited uh, during this week uh, while we're enjoying the Men Perfecting Men Conference. Uh, we're also installing a brand new sound system. We got uh, 20 years out of the old one that we've had and it was state of the art at the time. Uh, by the time we finished with it, it was held together by spit and duct tape. Well, the Lord blessed us to buy a brand new and it's being installed this week. So that's construction going on in the sanctuary. But you go to Kojic.org tonight and be blessed by uh, this the, our men's conference that I am 
a proud part of. I want to say to everyone who is watching, uh, share it, spread the news, share this little promo. I want you to watch the conference. I'll be there. We'll be taking place in it. And, and the directions that we give you, we pray that you will go by those directions. Send us uh, some, some, uh, support, support the work. We are interested in affecting our men. I'll close with this. Our goal is to encourage our men to be more cerebral and less emotional. We're not, we don't have time to walk around talking about we're hurt. We don't have time to walk around and being victims and complainers. Forget that stuff. Forget that stuff. We're not listening to people who tells us to take the S off of our chest, that every time a man tries to project strength, we accuse him of masking and, and being, being a fake. Why is it that when a man projects strength, he's pretending, but when a man projects weakness, then he's being real? Much of this stuff is only told to African-American men. Because I'm telling you right now, white men, when they talk to their men, they're not telling their guys secretly to be weak, to be whiners. They're telling them to be sharks, to be rulers, amen, to be killers, if you will. Well, we're able to be strong as well. God calls us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So I'm done. I went a little long today, but you won't hear from yours truly tonight because, but, but you won't, you won't miss a thing. Join us in our Men's Perfecting Men Conference. It's going to bless you real good and make God's choice, blessings be yours. That, that This man of God, Bishop Edwin Bass, is going to preach. And when he preach, even though it's online, I want you to say amen. God bless you. We'll see you soon.